Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're asking a question. What is the voltage of this battery? So here we have a little AA battery. What is its voltage? We could scientifically call it a cell, but commonly it's referred to as a battery. Now that sounds like a very simple question. And we're going to examine it and show you that there's actually more to that simple question than meets the eye at first glance. So, I've actually got here a large picture of a cell or battery. There is the negative terminal at A. There's the positive terminal at B or pole. I've also got a bulb or a globe, a little lamp. We've got the casing, which is one terminal, C we got the middle section, D, and then I've got a picture here of a voltmeter with a black or negative terminal at E and the positive terminal or red terminal at F. And then we've got the equivalent um, components. We've got a cell, a larger cell. We've got a bulb or lamp here, and we've got a digital multimeter which we're going to use as our voltmeter. So let's get back to the question. What is the voltage of this cell? And I guess most of you will say, well look on the thing and it's going to tell you somewhere on it that it is a 1.5 volt cell or battery. So 1.5, what, what is the voltage? of the cell. We could just read it as 1.5 volts. Okay, that's one answer. Then I could ask questions like, well, does it matter if this is a new or an old battery? Well, that, does, that raises a few other questions. If it is a new battery or if it's an old battery, surely that is going to affect it. So, I think most of us who've been around batteries for a while will say, well, it might be less than 1.5 if it's an old battery. Now, if I had to give you a battery and a bulb, a battery and a bulb, and ask you to connect the two together, would you be able to do that? Now, most people, I think, would be able to connect them up. And if I had to say to you, use the letters A and connect it with B or C or D and whatever, which letters would you have to connect to get this bulb to glow? So, bulb to glow. What must I connect? Now, that is a surprisingly difficult question for some people, but I'm presuming that for most of us who've grown up with batteries and bulbs, you'd be able to figure out, well, I probably have to connect the one terminal of the battery to the one part of the bulb, terminal of the bulb, and the other side of the battery to the other part of the Bulb. So we kind of have an intuitive idea that we need to connect this to that and that to that or maybe that to that and that to that. So let's give for the bulb to glow, what's the least amount of things we have to connect? Well, we have to connect say B to D and we have to connect A to C. That's probably all we could connect A to D or A to D and then B to C. So let's take it. Here's B and let's connect it to D. And let's connect A to C. And there's our bulb glowing. Now it might be just a little bit too faint for you to see, but we've managed to get our bulb to glow. 
unfortunately it's not a very bright bulb. So let's disconnect that. Now, if I had to then ask you, how would you measure, give it, if I give you a voltmeter, will you be able to measure the voltage of the battery? So, measure the voltage of the cell. What must you connect to measure the voltage of the cell? Now, for most people who've been around electronics for a while, this is going to be a very easy question. So, let's see if you are able to figure that out. What must you do? Which letters must you connect to measure the voltage of that cell? There's your voltmeter. I'm going to switch it on and at the moment it's reading 0.00. So to measure the voltage of the cell, which letters must we connect? And that's a surprising question. If you've never done it before, you're probably going to struggle with that. So those who have played a little bit with electronics will probably be fairly easily able to say, well, we must take the positive side of the battery and do you think it matters which part of the voltmeter we connect it to? Well, the voltmeter's got a positive and a negative side, so presumably positive to positive and negative to negative. So we don't really have a choice here. It's B to F. B to F and A to E. A to E. So let's do that. So, we're going to take the red, which is F, we're going to connect it to the positive, we're going to take the black, or E, to A, and let's measure the voltage, and it says 1.43 volts. So let's give the voltage, measure the voltage of the cell, 1.43. Four three volts. One comma four three volts. So what do we notice first of all? That it's not the same as 1.5. So if I had to ask you what's the voltage of a cell, we could take what's written on the battery, or maybe we don't believe that, we could actually measure it ourselves. But I could then say, okay, now with the bulb glowing. What is the voltage measured? So why don't you tell us what do we have to connect up to have the bulb glowing and measure the voltage of the cell? Well, we've already seen how we can connect the bulb up to glow, so why don't we do that? Let us again connect B to D, B to D, and A to C, There's our bulb glowing, and at the same time, let's connect F to B and E to A. Let's do the same things as we did before, and we measure the voltage of our now glowing bulb, and the voltage reads 1.19. 1, 1.19. 1, 1, volts. And that was with connecting B to D and A to C, as well as F to B and E to A. So with all of those connected, we measured 1.19 volts. But look how interesting that is. 
our voltmeters now reading with a current flowing and with a bulb glowing, it's measuring 1.19 volts. Look how different that is. So in other words, it's, we've now got a third voltage involved. When something's happening, when we actually are using our battery, our cell, we have a, is that a higher or a lower voltage than what we originally measured? It is a lower voltage. So there's a difference between our, our voltage when we just measured it with no bulk glowing and when something was glowing. Let's just, as a matter of interest, find out what's the difference in voltage. And we tend to call that the lost voltage is going to be equal to, let's work it out. It was our original voltage, which is 1, 1,43 minus 1,19. So what is the difference? And the difference, I think you can see, is going to be point. If we take 43 minus 19, it's going to be 24, 0.24 volts. Lost voltage. And very interestingly, each of those has its own name. Now, this is called the EMF, electromotor force. And this, when it's actually in usage, is called the potential difference, or PD. And that gives us our lost volts of 0.24 volts. So... When there's no current flowing, we measure it at 1.43. When there is a current flowing and our bulb is glowing, our voltage, otherwise known as our potential difference, is less than our EMF, and it is 1.19. And the difference between the two, or our lost volts, is, called, is measured and calculated at 0.24 volts. Now... Where do you think this lost volts comes from? Now that's with a current flowing. Where do you think this lost 0.24 volts came from? I'm going to give you a hint. And it's from Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Which states that volts equals I times R. And that is... Ohm's law has to do with where voltages get lost to. Do we have a current flowing in our second case when the bulb was glowing? And I'm just going to disconnect this so we don't waste the battery. Do we have a current flowing in the second case? And the answer is yes. Do we have a resistance somewhere? Well, when we measured this, they seem to be coming out of the cell less voltage. So somewhere we lost 0.24 volts before it even got out of the cell. So there must be a resistance inside the cell or battery that it loses 0.24 volts even before it gets out. And that lost voltage must be due to the chemicals inside the battery. So the battery has got a chemical reaction going on, but even as it's pushing out electrons, when it's doing it under heavy pressure with the bulb on, it's forcing those electrons through the chemicals, and that is where we are losing our voltage, our lost voltage, and that is where we get the difference between EMF, when we don't have a current, and potential difference, or PD, when we do have a current. So the current times the resistance inside the chemicals leads to our lost volts of 0.24. So generally, this is regarded as a little r when it's the internal resistance of the cell. So there we go. The voltage equals the current times the resistance, and this adds up to our lost volts because you have a current and internal resistance in 
the cell itself.